So Battlefield 5 has been out for a couple of days now, a couple of weeks if you've played early with EA Origin Access, and I think it's about time to talk about the game as a complete product, which is pretty funny because the game is not a complete product to a lot of people, but I think it's complete enough to where I feel comfortable enough to talk about the game knowing that the product probably isn't going to change drastically except for some bug fixes and some tweaking here and there. Um, I know that this review is probably a little bit late, I know that a lot of the big YouTubers have already released their videos, and my review is coming so late because I didn't pay extra money to get the game early, as much as I wanted to when I saw everybody else playing the deluxe version, but uh, I got it on the 20th, just like everybody else, but in, in a way, I think that kind of eliminates some pressure I might have had to enjoy the game if I had bought it early because I had spent that extra money, but this is going to be a completely honest review of the game. I'm going to be very upfront and forward about my thoughts. Uh, I'm not going to be like Westy, the EA workhorse, where I come out and tell you that the game is almost perfect, because it's not. This game is far from perfect, but has DICE saved Battlefield 5 from the disaster that it was looking to be? Yeah, I would say that they have. This game has really shaped up nicely, and I think that it has the potential to be one of the better titles in the franchise when all is said and done, but we'll get into that in the video. Obviously, it's going to be a longer video, and that's because I'm going to try and not gloss over anything. I'm going to try and go deeper into the actual mechanics of the game and give you my feelings on them, because at the end of the day, you aren't looking for me to tell you what, that the game is pretty or tell you anything that you already know. You want to know how the game plays and if it's fun or not. I'm going to start off with a lot of the positive feedback uh, that I have first, and I do think that a lot of people need to hear that first, especially considering how on edge people are about this game. Obviously the marketing of the game didn't do it any favors, but I still see people pretty upset about what happened, which on the one hand I understand, but on the other hand, if you are still blatantly hating on the game because of the comments made by EA and DICE earlier on in the marketing, and you aren't giving the actual game a fair shot, just based on the game itself and not on the outside politics. I think that's being a little stubborn and childish to tell you the truth, but with all that aside, let's get into the good stuff here. If you enjoy the video, make sure that you like and subscribe, and here we go. So naturally, I think the first place to start is where everybody starts, and that is the gunplay. Now, I'm going to kind of brush over this to get to the more important stuff, because at this point, if you've played Battlefield before, you know what you're getting into here. The gameplay is really tight, it's really crisp, it feels very good and rewarding, and I found myself really enjoying it. I will say this though, this game is really fun to play, and there is definitely an addicting quality to the multiplayer that hasn't quite been there in the past Battlefield titles. I can honestly say that whenever I have logged off the game, I have wanted to get right back on and play some more, and maybe that's just because the game is new, I recognize that, but I haven't felt this way about playing a Battlefield title since probably Battlefield 3. I truly look forward to learning this game and playing everything that the game has to offer. Now I will say that this review will not be covering the single player war stories, well, actually, I, I could probably review them right now on the spot. Yeah, they're okay. Not as good as Battlefield 1 War Stories. Battlefield 5 Stories kind of felt uninspired to me. Almost like DICE was like, oh, they like the War Stories. Let's just do that again so we can spend more time on the multiplayer instead of making uh, a grandiose campaign like in past titles. As far as the gun balance is concerned, overall, I feel it's very good. I will say that the KE-7 is a bit overpowered currently, and the SMGs for the meta class are underpowered, but DICE is aware of this, and they will be fixing it, which is good, because I think the SMGs need a serious buff in order for people to play the class correctly, or, or efficiently. You know, the meta class is supposed to be good in close quarters range, but in my experience thus far, when I'm clearing an area to go for a revive, I'm still being beaten up by some of the assault weapons, when, when in reality, I probably shouldn't be at that range. Now I'm sure what a lot of people are curious to know about is how the attrition system ended up in the final build of the game, and I'm happy to say that DICE absolutely knocked attrition out of the park and they did a really fantastic job. One of my biggest gripes with the beta was that I felt panicked to get ammo all the time, and I ran out of ammo too quickly, and instead of being uh, on the objective to finish off a flank or to capture the flag or the objective, I found myself running to an ammo station instead of that, and it really kind of felt... Uh, like an awkward feeling of uselessness to me, but in the final build of the game the attrition system really is fantastic There is more ammo off of spawn you get more ammo when you pick it up off of dead bodies And everybody starts off with one health pack Which is the suggestions that I gave in my feedback of the beta So I'm really excited and happy to see that they've gone ahead and done that and what I found is that I still will run out of ammo Sometimes when I'm playing a certain angle or area of the map that is away from the objective or a resupply station, but 
I really have no sense of panic like I did in the beta. Instead of feeling almost like a social hub in which the entire team flocks at the ammo and health, they serve more as a foundational support role. And I don't feel like I need to go to the closest ammo cache as soon as I spawn anymore. But when I do need ammo or a new health pack, the caches are a welcome sight and I'm glad that they're there. It's nice to know that they are there when you absolutely need them, but they're not a necessity in order to be able to play and enjoy the game. As far as the movement mechanics go, that is all still pretty good as well. Movement has a nice flow to it. Character animations are pretty fluid. There are times when my character just refuses to climb up over something that I should realistic realistically be able to get over without any problem, like a small rock or a little hill, but that's kind of a bug that has been in the Battlefield franchise for a while now and you kind of just have to accept it at this point. I will say that sometimes it's hard to discern whether you are crouch walking or not because of how fast characters are moving when they are crouched, but that's kind of a nitpicky detail. And at the end of the day, if you're moving at almost the same speed, it doesn't really matter. It just kind of matters where your hitbox is. I do think that the progression has also greatly improved from the beta. What I particularly uh, appreciated was that the first weapon of every class is upgraded all the way so new players don't have to use default weapons against players with fully upgraded kits that have been playing you know, since the deluxe edition came out. Other than that, my stances on the progression are more or less the same from the beta. I really like the progression overall and I enjoy the ability to switch trees now which is something that I really really wanted um, and I'm glad that they kind of did away with all that buying a new gun stuff. The revive mechanics are still overall pretty enjoyable. I look forward to the addition of Dragging Fallen Soldiers, but to be completely honest with you, I don't think it's going to be in the game soon because uh, it, it prevent, I think it presents a lot of technical challenges. I will say this as well, I do wish that the death card screen would last just a couple seconds longer. Sometimes I'll die and have a hard time figuring out where I got shot from and how I died, especially when I get killed by somebody far away. The death card kind of goes away too quickly for me to get any real information on how I died died and by whom and I understand that DICE is probably doing this so they could speed up the process of actually dying because of course the bleed out mechanic is new and it takes a lot longer but I would rather take seconds off the time it takes for me to bleed out so I can get good information on how I died and relay it to my teammates. The maps so far in Battlefield 5 are absolutely outstanding, and they play pretty well so far for the most part. Hamada is probably my least favorite map at this point. I just think it's a little too big. But overall, I think that DICE really did a nice job with the maps. There are certain places on the map that people tend to flock to still, but I think that's more attributed to people not knowing the maps well enough yet. And the, and the main example that I'm thinking right now is kind of like the organ section in the middle of the sea flag on uh, Devastation of Rotterdam. The soldier customization in the game isn't too flashy and in the way, but it still presents itself enough to allow the customization to feel unique and give you a sense of personality. The game offers you a bunch of face templates with actual people's names, and although these names aren't historically centered or driven or anything, to be honest, they're quite random, but it, it, I felt like it gave it all a nice touch of humanity and personality to the customization, and I think overall, this does feel like World War II. It's not the gritty and intense portrayal like Saving Private Ryan that some people were wanting, <coughs> Excuse me, but when I'm consciously thinking about it, it does feel like I am in World War II. The sound design is amazing, and the music is gorgeous. DICE has done a fantastic job with this once again, just like they did in Battlefield 1. You've been listening to some of the soundtrack in the background as I talked about the game. Uh, explosions sound very earthy and, and full, if that makes sense, and all the guns sound powerful and just like their real-life counterparts. Tanks are pretty balanced at the moment, I feel like, particularly in the infantry versus uh, vehicle aspect. I think that people are complaining that tanks are underpowered because they are pretty difficult to use now. It's not like Battlefield 1 where somebody can hop into a tank and just sponge anti-tank nades and go on a nice kill streak, maybe say 10 kills. Good tankers are going to play well with these tanks, bad tankers are going to suffer as it should be. Maybe there should be a small nerf to the Panzerfaust, but overall I think it's pretty well balanced. I have had tanks absolutely melt me, but a good squad can do work on a bunch of tanks just as well, so I think that's pretty balanced at the moment. And that really about all sums up the good things about the game. Now is where I start diving into some of my more negative criticisms of the game, and the first one being that I really think that fortifications are just the absolute biggest waste of a feature. I personally don't use them, some people obviously do. I have seen fortifications built around the map. I just think it's a wasted feature. And to be totally honest, I forget they even exist sometimes. It's pretty safe to say that the game would 
more or less be the same with or without it and it kind of comes off as sort of a blatant play or ploy to bounce off the success of Fortnite which is what a lot of people thought when it was announced and in practice that's exactly what it is. In my 10 plus hours of playing the game so far I haven't built one fortification. Again, kind of useless to me. Footsteps are either non-existent or just extremely hard to hear in this game. This is one of my main critiques of the beta and it's unfortunately carried over to the main game. I don't know if it's a glitch or not, or if, if it's a design choice, but if it is a design choice, then it's a terrible choice. Uh, most of my deaths in this game come from people running or shuffling besides me or behind me, that in most other games I would be able to sound whore and hear, and especially in a game that doesn't have 3D spotting anymore and it's difficult to see and find people anyways, you, you really need to rely on your other senses so you can see the problem that arises when I'm trying to use those other senses but I can't hear footsteps. I will say that it is a little easier to see people since the beta. I haven't been feeling the need to go get my eyes checked like the beta wanted to make me do, but obviously with 3D spotting gone, it's going to take a lot of adjusting and getting used to. And personally, I think once the game has been out for like maybe three months down the line, it won't be as much of a nuisance as it is now when people are learning the maps and just trying to get an overall flow of the game. And I'll explain more about how I think you can overcome all of that when I start making the How Not to Suck Up Battlefield 5 videos, which will be coming soon, so be on the lookout for those. As far as squatting up and the main menu UI is concerned, the UI itself is pretty organized and self-explanatory, but the execution can be sloppy at best. If your squad is already in the game, it's going to be very difficult to join directly on them if their squad is full. Sometimes their squad was not full and I would be in the main menu and I would join their squad, but I would not be loaded into their game for whatever reason and I would have to ask for a server number to get into a queue to join manually. I don't see why I need to be in the squad before I do anything with my friends and load into the game, and I don't see why I can't just load in regardless of whether I'm in the squad or not, and then join the squad manually in-game. It's, it's funky, and I, I'm not sure what's up with that, but it, it's not good right now. The time to kill overall is good, and I'm a fan of it, but I would say that sometimes the, the difference between the time to kill and the time to die is a little inconsistent. I'm having a hard time convincing myself that the time to kill will stay exactly as it is in the current version of the game. I just think eventually people are going to get tired of the time to kill and people are going to start to complain. It's kind of just the nature of things and that kind of worries me because when people complain about things that probably shouldn't be drastically changed, it negatively affects the game as a whole. And that's kind of what we saw when DICE decided to nerf the slide so heavily in Battlefield 1. For those of you that have been subscribed to me for a long time now, you know how I feel about that. But for those of you who are new, you might be watching this video. Uh, the too long didn't read version of it is that I felt that it made the game very clunky and it really kind of nuked the skill gap. So I, I, I'm anticipating that some tweaking is going to be done to the TTK eventually. I'm not sure how it's going to end up in the end of things. Which, speaking of skill gap, I do, do kind of want to talk about the game's difficulty for a minute or two. This game is obviously more difficult than what you are probably used to, and I assume what most people are used to is Battlefield 1. Now, if this is your first Battlefield title, then it probably won't bother you as much, but if you've played a lot of Battlefield 1, and you were good at that game, then you're probably going to be hit pretty hard by this game. Battlefield 1 overall was an extremely easy Battlefield game, and it didn't take a lot for people to do well. And that's not the case in Battlefield 5. This game is difficult, and you really need to play smart and patient. You can't just run out and around like a maniac like you could in Battlefield 1. But with that all being said, I kind of feel like this game has gone the wrong way about making the game difficult. And this is something that's kind of hard to explain, so stick with me here. But I kind of feel like the game is targeting good players and saying... Well, how can we make this as hard as possible so good players don't play as well as they could in previous games, but not affecting the average to below average players? Now, obviously, as you can tell by the gameplay, it hasn't taken me long to deliver the level of play that I expect from myself and you expect from me, and I say this as humbly as I can. It hasn't taken me much to maintain a skillful kill-death ratio of like the low threes and, and, and upper four or, or lower fours, and what have you and and of course in the grand scheme of things i know that strictly kill death ratio isn't the end all be all of what defines skill you know obviously you need to look at the bigger picture because you could take a look at somebody's stats and say well i have a really good kill death ratio but maybe that's because you don't play the objective and maybe you go eight and one in a game but you didn't do anything but i'm playing more or less as i should be for somebody that is a competitive player on playstation 4 of course i'm still learning the game like the rest of you but with that all being said, as it pertains to difficulty, I really feel like this game is purpose purpose purposefully 
designed to impede and put up roadblocks and make things as difficult as possible for me and skilled players like me. It has never been easier to get a kill than it is in Battlefield 5. To kind of put this into example, let's just say that you have a floor and a ceiling in an empty space, and the space in between the ceiling and the floor is the skill gap. That's where every player of the game resides. What I feel like they've done in the game is instead of saying, okay, let's make the game harder and raise the skill ceiling to offer a greater challenge to the players already at the current ceiling or close to it, I feel like instead they've kind of jammed the skill ceiling and the skill floor together to the point where they are almost one. And it's created a skill gap in which great players will still be great, but everybody else has an equally easy chance to be just as good without the time and effort put in. In other words, there's a lot of hand-holding going on, and that's really reflected in the time to kill and the attrition system, which again, I've already stated that I enjoy those mechanics, but I don't, I, I don't know. It feels like a really backhanded compliment. Oh, you go on huge kill streaks? Well, we're going to make sure that you don't have enough ammo and health, so there's a higher chance that you get killed going for ammo and reloading. And we're going to make the time to kill so fast that you have no chance to survive a 2v1 or two gunfights back to back. And sure, at the end of the day, positioning and gun skill will prevail, and as the game ages, I'll learn more and use positioning and such to my advantage, but I'm doing more and more to people that clearly are below my skill level, and that I would probably wouldn't have died to in previous titles. It, it's complicated. You kind of see what I'm saying? Again, no problems with the game being difficult, and I'm enjoying attrition in the TTK overall. I just think that the way that they've made the game harder is kind of backhanded to good players. Moving on, one of my biggest gripes with the beta was that the overall game experience took a gigantic nosedive when you weren't playing with a squad, and sadly that's kind of the case with the base game as well. This game is kind of a nightmare to play alone sometimes, and playing with randoms can genuinely not be fun in comparison to playing with personal friends or platoon members. And of course you can say, well, of course Catalyst, everything is better with friends, to which I agree with you, but that shouldn't excuse the fact that the game is extremely frustrating alone. Ideally, you should have just about the same amount of fun without friends as you do with them when playing a game like this. You want to finish your game and say, well, I played by myself, but I still had a pretty good time. With this game, I kind of feel like it bounces between the two extremes. It's either I played with friends and it was a blast, or I played by myself and it was frustrating as all hell. And realistically, it shouldn't be like that. Now, of course, this critique fluctuates based on how competitive you are. If you don't care about winning or losing, this won't bother you. You're just going to have a good time. But if you are competitive like me, it's going to bother you how bad this game can be playing alone sometimes. If you are a solo player, you will have a rough time in this game, and your success is more or less linked to how good your squad is, and it should never be like that. Which leads me to my next point, which is that Battlefield 5 suffers really badly from bad teammate syndrome. I know this is something that DICE can't fix, and it's not their fault, but kind of merging with my last point, since the game is so teamwork oriented, you experience and your success hinders on your squad, and if you get a bad squad, you're kind of screwed. And that really is attributed to the type of community that this franchise has now. There are more casual players in Battlefield than ever before, and that's not always a bad thing. But with Battlefield 5, I think it has a bigger impact just because on how much you are relying on some of those players who either don't care or don't know what they're doing. If you are playing by yourself and you go down, just know that you're probably not going to get revived. And if there is a clean opportunity, players still probably won't even revive you. There are a lot of players I've seen already that are camping with snipers and bipods away from the objective in fear because this game can be punishing at times. And unfortunately, DICE has doubled down so hard on the teamwork aspect of the game that no teamwork from squad mates really hinders your experience. Sometimes the game as a whole kind of lacks game sense. I, I, or excuse me, the team lacks game sense. I've kind of taken a look at my map a couple times in games and have seen the entire team rushing to one flag and then the game kind of turns into a turnstile of trading flags and running from one flag to another in a circle instead of holding and defending flags. I have seen people complain about not being on the mic during the game so that they can't communicate communicate with one another in a squad, and that's kind of the standard now for Battlefield games, and that's that people don't communicate anymore, and it's especially appearing in a game like this. The last kind of team and squad based point I have is that it feels like the move to 4 man squads from 5 man squads was a mistake. It really kind of threw off a lot of squad composition, and there have been a lot of times where I found myself saying, man, if only ha we had a fifth person, and sometimes there are situations when maybe the squad needs an extra support player, but nobody can really switch since they are all doing their job with their own classes. I just feel like the fifth man in the squad would really help things out. 
I can see bipoding becoming an issue in the game. Overall, I've liked the decision to have the game, uh, the more heavy hitting machine guns being bipod focused, but there have been a couple times where the game I was playing was a little one sided and people just resorted to laying back with bipods and choke points and kill zones and absolutely dump chunking people and it really deteriorated the experience. Sniper headshot hitboxes are too large at the moment, and I said this in the beta, and it's still true in the final boot version of the game. I've been seeing a lot of people talking about this, and as a blanket statement, I would agree that the headshot hitboxes are too large. I think they need to be nerfed. I think DICE was worried about the potential backlash from scout classmates with the removal of the sweet spot, which, thank god that's gone, but I think they did make the hitboxes a little bit too large, and that makes scouts potentially a very powerful class to play, especially on PC. As far as the game modes are concerned, all of them are genuinely a lot of fun, and the maps for the most part, as I said, are, have already turned out pretty well for each game mode. I know in the past it felt like certain maps were made with certain game modes in mind, but in Battlefield 5, all the game modes play well. I do have one major problem though, and that comes with the front lines and airborne game modes, and I've heard that this is going to be fixed, but I am not sure yet. DICE needs to get rid of the gigantic bomb symbol that appears over the bomb carrier's head. The footage earlier on in the video of Hamada was on front lines. The way that game actually turned out was eventually my team got to MCOMs or, or bombs with about 25 minutes left, to get, left in the game and what ended happening was that the game lasted the entirety of the rest of the 25 minutes because the enemy knew exactly where the bomb was and they simply focus fired and swarmed the bomb carrier and I think that's a bit overkill. I'm not sure what they were thinking or why they felt the need to change it from the format of Battlefield 1 in which everybody had a bomb and you didn't know where people were unless they were spotted to this format where if you pick up the bomb, you're as good as dead. Especially with the teamwork issues that I complained about earlier in the video. It just makes no sense from a philosophy standpoint as well for a game that has made a clear and present effort to make people harder to see and remove 3D spotting. Why would you go ahead and slap a gigantic marker over somebody's head that basically says, I'm right here, shoot me. It's terrible, it's annoying, and front lines and airborne really suffer and they're almost unplayable from that design choice. Normally, I'm pretty 50-50 on these kinds of things, but this is something that needs to be changed as soon as possible. And it looks like they're going to do it, but again, this this I don't know if it's going to be up by the time that this review goes live. Lastly, I know there have been some bad glitches reported, and people have been saying that this game still feels early access, and in some places, it does. But for me, I haven't really experienced that many issues. My performance has been fine. I haven't really dropped frames, I've had a few glitches, but most of them have been visual glitches. There is one bad frontlines glitch where the bombs glitch out and you are stuck on the bombing section until the game is over, and sometimes the game doesn't even end. Uh, another issue I experienced was that I was having trouble loading into the next round of the game a couple of times. I got the black screen of death a few times and other times it acted like it was loading me into the map that I had just finished playing when, in reality, my squad had already spawned in the next map and they were already capturing flags. I will say that the game lacks polish, uh, especially with some of the animations and spawns. They can be kind of funky at times, but overall, the game isn't as bad of an experience perform uh, performance-wise. It certainly isn't Fallout 76 levels of bad performance, and I've been watching that dumpster fire for far. But that about ends the review. I've pretty much said everything that I need to. I know this is an extremely long video. I will say that I am going to be streaming later tonight, probably about 6 or 7 o'clock once I get home from Thanksgiving break and I'm going to be streaming on YouTube. I know that I said I'm going to start streaming on Twitch, but I do want to give my YouTube people uh, a nice stream to watch and then you know we can all go over to Twitch together. So look, be on the lookout for that. Of course, I'm going to leave my Twitch and everything in the description, so make sure you go follow me there. If you enjoyed this video, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you like and subscribe and tell me you what you think of the game in the comment section below if you are new here please do subscribe and if you've already subscribed make sure you turn on post notifications so you don't miss an upload ladies and gentlemen my name has been nick or catalyst thank you so much for watching and i will see you all another time